Hello everyone and welcome to another success story of EGMAT. Today we have Major Rohit Raina with us who scored a 700 with a split of Q49 and a V36. So thank you Rohit, thank you for joining in today and a huge welcome to you. Yeah, you're welcome and uh, thanks to you also and the entire EGMAT team for helping me out with this journey. Thank you. Thank you. So Rohit, I would like to highlight a little bit about your background here because you yeah. come from a very non-conventional background, right? Specifically yeah. when we talk yeah. about the GBAT mm -hmm. domain. So I would like people yeah. to know that you are actually serving as an officer presently in the armed forces, the Indian armed forces, yeah. and you are working as a short service officer, right? Yeah, so exactly. for people to understand more about your background, I would like to come in from your words right yeah so, so can you take us a little bit on that yeah so i'm a short service officer and i'll be completing my tenure uh, in march 2023 so this hmm. is where it all came that i decided to prepare for gmat and uh, hopefully uh, by next year i'll be starting my mba so uh, that's the whole part for the short service officer or people from the defense background they have options of uh, working for 10 years or 20, 14 years or 20 years hmm. so i decided uh, this year only that finally I'll, I'll take a and uh, exit army next year and I'll go for an MBA. Uh, so that is what uh, it came from and uh, that is how I decided that now I need to seriously prepare for GMAT. Though I was aware of the test and a couple of my college friends had already appeared for it. So mm -hmm. I knew about the sections of the test, the overall yeah. test and uh, I had a, a fair idea like what all will be tested in the exam. But Mm -hmm. uh, to be honest, uh, for people in uh, my kind of profession, we are uh, we are not into so much of active uh, reading or maybe so much of yes. uh, calculations or so much of data. And so, uh, and we are out of touch. So that's True. the whole point I want to highlight that uh, this is where the uh, importance of a tool like EGMAT, I, I call it mm -hmm. as a tool because it's actually something which uh, helps you to reduce the force and the effort that is required for the real test. So mm -hmm. that is here, it uh, helped me and uh, I decided that I am prepare using the EGMAT subscription. Okay, okay. So Rohit, yeah. help us understand that you have done the entire course, right? Be yeah. it the verbal part and the quants part, right? Yeah. So how was your approach when you started with the course? Did you do one section at a time and how did you move across the subsections? So uh, like uh, since, uh, we follow all orders and all kind of instructions. So for me, this was also, I wanted to move it as per the instructions which you get at the start of the course, that you mm -hmm. move with the verbal part, you go with the sentence correction, then you do the critical reasoning and finally the reading comprehension. So actually, I was I didn't even uh, had even uh, any uh, reservations of using my technique. I just followed whatever was told to me. I just mm -hmm. completely followed it and... So I started with sentence correction. I finished it the entire modules and okay. uh, then did the cementing stage. So hmm. uh, whatever was told at the threshold levels, I I completely if I would not make uh, the meet the threshold, I would entire do the entire module again. So for the okay. sentence correction, I actually had to do the module first uh, two times before okay. I proceeded to the critical reasoning part. So I think uh, it is uh, tried and tested. And mm. that is how I believe once I put faith into a system that you need to follow whatever is being told to you. And these steps, are, even if you don't make it, just basically, uh, there's a flow chart, I think, which is meant, uh, there's a cementing video yes. in which you yes, thought yeah. what cementing is. Mm. So I was not able to meet, I think, the 70% threshold in medium and the 65% mm. threshold in hard. hard. So I just followed these steps. I again mean, did the module and uh, as it happens and as it is that next time I clear this meeting. So I moved step by step doing each module, doing each section. Yeah. And finally I reached quant and uh, with quant I was a bit worried because I saw that there was so much of modules. <laughs> but uh, yeah. I think there is uh, a system called a space wherein you give a diagnostic test at the start of a module. Hmm. And if it finds that you are good in some kind of section, so you yeah. have to, I think it's a AI based Yes, so yes, it is. That is how it works. And uh, I was relieved that the uh, lot of modules for me were skipped in quant. And uh, okay. I followed the same for the quant. Hmm. So if you go by month by month, I do I even purchase the subscription in March, but I could not study in March and April. I started preparing in May. 
So okay. I took around one and a half month for verbal, hmm. and which includes twice uh, I did three sentences. What do you say? Yeah. Added it. Yeah. And the reason for it is since we're not into reading, I was uh, and yes. I was not uh, we're not aware of that kind of grammar rules as well as the meaning based approach which is taught. So it took a bit of time for me for the sentence portion. Hmm. And by the month of June, I was on to the quant. So June I took for quant and. July we started doing the other part. So, so uh, what I want to highlight over here is that you just follow the process which is taught to you and you get the results. And it's yeah. exciting because it keeps you involved in the process. Once you are appearing for a cementing quiz, you are always looking forward for the results. You true, want to test true. whether the effort you have put into the study part is it mm. worth. Uh, yeah. the, so it's kind of a interactive process, even though there is no one at the Second and still you are yeah. actually interacting with the tools. So that yeah. is how I think the easy math part. Though I've not tried other uh, portals, but but I find more interesting over here is that it keeps you involved. It keeps you. It keeps challenging you in a way. Every time you go for a cementing quiz, you're looking forward for the result. You're looking forward to how many questions you. Well, are able to solve. You get solved. How yes. many questions you are not able to solve. What kind of mistakes you are doing? So, and uh, the second part I want to highlight that every question has a data analytics part also along with it. So you are able to see how many others have committed the same mistake, how much time yes. others are taking. Yeah. So this is where I feel the scholarian parts uh, is different, maybe hmm. from others, which I don't know. I, but I feel that it is actually something which was very interactive, even hmm. though people would say that uh, and. Uh, uh, we will say that there's nobody who's teaching you, but actually you are interacting with yourself and you're competing with yourself for solving the questions. True, so true, this true. is how I found find it interesting. And finally, I was able to do the quant part. And finally, I wrote a mail to the yeah. my team that now I am. I think I'm ready for the test. But mm. uh, you there was some there are some areas which I need to improve. So. Uh, for the first time I read that mail, I said, no, I've been meeting those cementing sessions, mm. but then there were times yeah. I was just uh, lagging by 5%, 10% in some yeah. modules. Yes. So yes. That, that, yes. that's where the uh, strategy team, I think you are from the chat teaching, they, yes. that's where you guys actually helped me that mm. even though I've done the course, uh, I have met the thresholds, but still, before we do the custom quiz uh, quizzes, you told me to go back to sentence correction and do certain uh, modules. Modules. Today. Yeah, uh, I think it were verb tenses and uh, modifiers. So hmm. that is where I missed it. But then you guys pitched in and you uh, took a review of my account and told me yeah. that you need to do these modules before we go to the test edit, uh, yes. custom quizzes. Yes, yeah. yes. And I think, Roy, that's very interesting. I think you put it very well because when I also looked into your account the first time that you wrote to us, you were already done with the major portion of verbal as well as fonts, right? Yes. You were almost yes. meeting the thresholds, like you said. But like we say, it's all about fine tuning because you really don't yeah. want to miss it. You want to, yeah. you have a target in mind. You want to get it done in the first attempt and as soon yeah. as possible. Right yeah, now, yeah. when we talk about the attempts, uh, Rohit, you have been through certain mocks. Uh, so, what kind of mocks were you taking? Only Sigma X mocks that we have on our platform, or the official mocks as well? And what was your approach so, while taking the mocks? Yeah, again, a point to be highlighted over here is like uh, before even approaching you guys or before even taking an advice on how to proceed, I just had those two, three tests with the yes, uh, the GMAT, official one get. is it? Yes, yeah, official one. So I just randomly, so that is uh, because I thought that just you do the course, that's the, uh, that's it. But okay. there are other things once you do uh, do a complete test, which I was not aware because yes. Uh, yes. I had never ever sat for those 31 questions or 36 questions in one go. True. So I just attempted both of them and I was bad in verbal part of that. I think one score was 620 and another was 630, so which was mm. a complete shocker to me. And that is then I uh, wrote a mail to you because earlier I thought that I I will just do the course and do the mocks and give the exam. Yes. But then I realized that I'm missing something. And mm -hmm. that is where I wrote a mail to the GMAT team that uh, is there something which I need to do before I do the full length test. And yeah. uh, to be honest, once you read, once I used to read your mails, I used to find that, oh my God, I have to do it in all this. And it's actually, yeah. uh, you feel that I've already done this. Why yes, should I do I it? Know. But then, true, true. then I had some kind of faith in the system and the yes. so I just 
said to myself that look you tried it yourself and you yeah. really I, I was like be 25 or 26 in those two GMAT mocks yeah so I thought mm. Uh, mm. yeah uh, let's just uh, be with the expert and let's mm. just follow you yeah. and I did uh, a post that uh, I did the custom courses before we moved to the mock. So I think you will give me assignments of 25 questions. Yes, 17 yes. Questions. Mixed quizzes of custom. Mixed yeah. quizzes. And yeah. actually it helps. It, mm. it helps you to build that stamina and to have that concentration level for like uh, one hour or 65 minutes. So then, then you have that kind of ability to go for the real full length mm. mocks. So yeah. I think I wasted those two mocks. And then I realized that I should follow you and then I followed you and then finally you sent me to uh, and even I, I still remember uh, I thought that this time you would be said, telling you to do the mock then you said no you again wait for some time for yeah this visit. and it helps actually it helps hmm. so that is how I think uh, the other part of the easy mat that is you guys who uh, who are the strategy experts who need, who I think work day in day out with students like us hmm. are helpful to gauge the preparation level and take it step by step to the final level. Yeah. yeah, I think thank you for that, Rohit. But I think it also comes from the fact that while we were sharing those plans, I think you were very willing and accepting of those, right? If I yeah. told you that you have to do the mixed quizzes, you really understood, okay, this is the pattern, you just straight away followed that. So I don't think it's more of my credit or our team. It's also because of you, because you did not give us any point to say that, hey, Rohit, you missed out this. When I was sharing yeah. the mocks, I was confident that once you write back to me, you are writing back after completing the plan that was shared to you. So, look, uh, so it is inbuilt in me or maybe yes. uh, the kind of profession true, I am from. True. But uh, this is again one piece I would like to tell everyone because like, if you feel that you are good, then you mm. will get this course and you mm. don't need some. I, there might be some people who don't require you guys for that. But if you are actually not doing well, then it is better to actually follow you guys and then attempt something because then you are just uh, wasting your time as well as then it leads to that spiral effect of getting frustrated that why I'm not scoring, then you keep reviewing things. And hmm. I think uh, it's more of a moving in a dark room without any kind of light. So it and is guidance, better to actually right. use uh, right. guidance. So right. that is why I thought that I will just stick to the keys and follow all these instructions to the end so that yeah, true, uh, true. I don't then regret afterwards. Hmm. Yeah. And so Rohit, help us understand like because this 700 was in your second attempt, right? Yeah. And yeah. the thing, interesting part is that you gave your first attempt almost like a week back and you scored a 680, right? Yeah. So help us understand what happened in this week or what was your particular analysis of how did you go from a 680 to a 700? What really went wrong in that 680 GMAT week. Yeah. So interestingly, again, like since I was uh, finally, I gave two mocks and then you reviewed both of the mocks for me. Yeah. But then I decided I'll give it in center exam. So I was looking mm. for centers, but there were no centers available. Mm. So I thought that, okay, I'll wait for some time and look for a date. So what yeah. happened is I think sometimes they have a cancellation at the center and then suddenly a uh, date appears on their 14. Okay, yeah. yeah. So, I just was just sitting and I randomly was looking at the site. I thought that I let me check the dates and there was a date which was available. Mm. I just mm. uh, booked it without even consulting you guys because I, and it was so, everything happened so quickly that I could yeah. not actually get back to you and I ask know, you, I know. Yeah. Gonna, am I ready? And are there any last minute things which I have to do? Mm. So, I just booked that exam and I went for the in-center exam. And uh, though the center experience was fine, but I, I think somehow because I was giving my mocks in a in a in, a, in an environment of uh, which was completely of any uh, rid of any disturbances, completely without any external disturbances, and I was in an in center exam for the first time. So somewhere in the verbal part, mm. I think I missed my approach, and especially post my exam, I was upset because like I was looking for a seven hundred and. So yeah, I know that 680 to 700 is hardly a difference mm. of, of 30, 30 odd points, which is actually might be an error at the GMAT energy because they also claim that plus minus 30 is their risk. But I was confident because I was giving mocks to forget, I was, yes. I was getting 700. So, yes. immediately after my exam, I wrote a 
mail i when i was, was not even i was in the list i think where i actually drafted that mail and as yeah. came on the list i sent you a mail and i was like i, I was not happy so true, true. uh i i think where i missed it was that i went for it without a plan so i mm. didn't had a last d minus 1 or like the d yes. one day prior two day prior approach yeah so that is where i think uh, i missed the bus during my first week that i should have included you guys because mm. the last two three days are so important where do you, what you actually revise before the yeah. test True. what not to do so, look i gave a mock just before my exam the day prior to my exam so uh, though i think that these factors may not affect everyone mm. but do, they do play a role so that is how i then approached you and you said me that don't worry and you told me to take a deep breath so we i actually i'm not so much of uh, i i can take pressure because of my yeah, job true, and true. everything and we've been doing that uh, for so i was not so worried but mm. i was only problem was that why this happened i wanted to have yes. a root cause analysis for the same wherein you then told me that i need to order an uh, esr which is yes. an extended score report with the gmat shares so i ordered an esr and uh, where i i think you highlighted that point to me that uh, i missed something which is uh which was i was not doing in my mocks there was something yeah. was different in my mocks yeah and finally we realized that it was the sentence correction where i scored actually 31 percentile or maybe lesser than that i think it yeah. was somewhere in the low 30s hmm. so and then we saw that uh, the esr has a section where is there's something called as a meaning based answer so there are like two types of questions for the sentence question one are grammar based and one is the meaning based yeah so actually i scored a zero percentile in the meaning based question So mm. if there were like seven questions or eight questions of which are meaning based, which happens yeah. if you are yes. doing well on GMAT, yes. most of the sentence question question will be based on the meaning. Yeah. Yeah. They uh, hardly have any grammar rules being tested in that, and it will be more of a meaning, which I know, which I knew because yes. I've been uh, practicing the I've mocks been doing, and going, yeah, practicing the mocks, and I was interacting yeah, again a part to be highlighted. Whenever I used to write a query. Uh, if you see my Gmail or Gmail Gmail account, there are a lot of queries which I used to write. So yeah. I, I I was it, uh, I was always aware of the fact hmm. that you can't actually solve sentence corrections without understanding the meaning. Meaning. True. The, True. The, the underlined part, and I think that's how the that is the pillar of the G E Gmail sentence corrections uh, section. If I put it in that. Yes. So actually, I missed that, and mm. the only reason for that maybe would uh, would be that I uh, in the test part I completely followed a different strategy which was told to me by you that you mm. take your time during the first two quarters, read the sentences, don't rush. If you want yeah. to leave a question, then leave a question. Don't uh, waste your time and then leave a question. Yeah. So a lot of things happened uh, during the test wherein I actually moved, digressed from my a uh, right approach to mm. and i quickly followed a wrong approach so mm. the entire sentence correction part i think seven eight questions which were meaning based i yeah. scored a zero so mm. zero means that i was not you were not able to apply the method you were not yeah. applying the method yeah. Yeah. yes yeah. yes yeah so i realized it and then uh, but the other part of the story you also where that i attempted another two mocks just after coming these six yes. mocks i was yes and yes. again i was not myself Again, yeah, I was like doing brute force on those uh, yeah tests. I was so I was upset. So you told me that actually there's something which is totally opposite what you've been doing for last two three months. Yeah. So I realized that yeah, just because of that one test which I went without discussing with you or without having any set approach, actually disturbed my entire uh, two three months of preparation. Yeah. So I regrouped myself and uh, I had a discussion with you asking mm. that okay we'll be doing it but I will be following whatever has been told to me. So that is where I think uh, sometimes you need to take uh, you need to be uh, forthcoming with the problems. So at mm. times I used to not write to you for like a week or something and mm. then I realized I need to actually talk to her for a. Um, for a continuous period of time, and then go for the final test. So then we yeah. regrouped ourselves. I think yes. you told me a few things. We attempted to custom quizzes, and that is where the importance of the portal. It always mm. has some questions with you, so you can go back, use yes. the method, get yes. that confidence again, yeah. score some good marks, and then you are again on the right path. And then you 
then you are again on the right uh, focus. You got your focus yes. back, and then you can actually. So I think the whole process should include the if you are following someone, then you should follow it. Uh, follow the advice to the last, rather than just leaving during the last one week, which I did in my first attempt. So I actually felt bad also. But in the end, during my second test, I was happy and. Yeah, uh, true. It all worked that, out so. fine in your second yeah, attempt. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah and yeah, yeah. I feel it also comes from the place like you know when you get a six eighty, your yeah. mindset also changes sometimes, right? And I think yeah, that's what yeah. happened for you. And many people don't realize it's not just about doing the questions, but it also uh, plays a major role how you know your mindset is, how calm you are during the exam yeah. and before the exam, right? For yeah, you, you yeah. had the potential, your score data, your mocks, everything said like it was loud and clear that you have to touch that seven hundred, right? Yeah. But the thing was that I think that six eighty and after that you were also in a rush. You were also getting into yeah. a rush, and like you said, you were applying the brute force, and you really wanted to get it through. Right, yeah. but I think you yeah. took the call in the right time. You calmed yourself down the right way, and then you went for the GMAT, and you were able to score your target as well, right? Yeah. So yeah. let's yeah. uh break it down subsection by subsection, right? Because yeah. coming yeah. from a very completely different background, Rohit, I want you to understand because, like you said in the beginning, your kind of studies and preparation is very different from what another person would be going through. Right, exactly. and for you, you had started very recently. It's like from yeah. April only you started, and you mentioned that you were not able to start from April. Also, it was actually yeah. from May that you started putting efforts. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I wanted to uh know more about you know what actually goes into and how were the subsections able to help and bridge those gaps. So let's start with verbal because I think verbal was a little critical part for you. So yeah, let's, exactly. So let's start with SE. How did SE work for you? What were the concepts you were able to build in during this time? So look for SE. I think what is important is to once you have done the because I think out of the three parts in verbal that is SC, CR, and RC, SE requires some kind of notes or you can say some kind of uh, last day studies also. Like uh, mm. because you kind of uh, you need to be uh, you need to remember some part of grammar rules. At least you need to do. Entirely meaning based approach is the approach, but you need to remember some. So for essay, I think that you follow the entire course okay. and then also have your notes or maybe you can keep. Uh, I think there is a PDF which at the EGMAT portal uh, okay. for the SC course summary. Yes. If you, if you see the, there yeah. is an entire summary. Hmm. So what I did is I took the printout of that summary. So okay. I I used to refresh myself prior to every mock or every final exam because actually. Use uh you can sometimes you forget things you don't hmm. know where is has to be used where is had to be used so hmm. that those kind of things you can just uh for uh kind of refer them before yeah. the exam and rest all is the meaning based approach is the key so look hmm. I told you for the first test if you don't yeah. read the sentence you want to use a shortcut of using the splits which is the other way of solving it uh I kept uh like if you read the GMAT a lot of people use that and. Hmm. They endorse that kind of approach, but I don't hmm. think that can help you if you are looking for a 80th percentile and beyond yeah. a verbal SC. Yeah. You can solve the low hanging fruit type of questions, like hmm. easy questions you can solve. But if you go for medium and hard questions, you can never solve them without understanding the sentence because then hmm. it boils down to two options, and then you keep fluctuating between those and waste your time. Hmm. So that is where I think the SC part you need to understand the meaning, and you True. also need to know the grammar rules and. Keep revising them once in a time whenever you are yes. reaching your mark. Yes, yes. For the CR, I think for CR it is more of a pre-thinking, which has been endorsed by EGMAT. I think mm. it's a very good way of being involved in the argument mm. because if you don't think, then you'll keep forgetting the argument. If you keep involved and look, it's just like a puzzle. If you looking for the answer, you will be involved in the puzzle. If you're not looking for the answer and just blindly reading it. Uh, looking for an answer means without reading the options, so that yeah. is the important part. So yes, yes. Spend some time with the argument. Hmm. Look for an answer, and uh, in your mind, and then you try and match that. So a lot of people say that uh, because I keep reading those blogs, blogs I and you understand. Avoid. Yes, yes. <laughs> and ultimately, that was the reason I had to actually give GMAT twice because I just followed a wrong strategy on my final exam. So, hmm. so uh, what I just want to say is that. You want to pre, you need to prethink because if mm. you don't prethink, at times, at times you will forget. And believe you me, once you're doing the medium and hard kind of portions on CR on the final day test, it, they are actually 
condensed like they hmm. are real and they are not like this straight forward document where you can actually read and then look for the answer true so i think free thinking helped me a lot and hmm. i think it's the one of the best approaches for critical reasoning and so to be honest if i tell you i actually didn't even use any kind of my own strategy for the gmat like yeah. i whatever was on the portal i just blindly followed it yes the only time yes. i just followed was my first exam so it's actually that <laughs> fine so that is why actually i was so eager to do this interview for the you also at time because i wanted to tell you that if you lose it on the final day it's actually you, you it's going to backfire it can go back. wrong yeah. yeah yeah it can go wrong and for the rc i think it's more about reading and summarizing every paragraph because hmm. ultimately because look if you are looking for gmat if you are looking for a, a real ba- breakthrough score of 700 you will get a tough paragraph it will not be a easy paragraph for you it will not yes. be something you would have read before yes it, true it true. might not be from your own field and for me like economics was out of my <laughs> scope even humanities was out of my scope there was no paragraph on something which is related to our kind of work so Don't for mean, me everything yes. was outside world yeah so for me everything yeah. was outside my domain and i still remember one of my earlier interactions with you you highlighted that these two are your unique areas economics and humanities i told i wanted to say in science is my unique area because i've been out of touch on science also <laughs> so for rc also if you don't uh, summarize and you feel that you can brush through read and solve mm-hmm. then it might work for somebody who has like got some kind of reading exposure in his early days of life or maybe in his school time or he's a thorough reader or somebody who yeah. knows two three domain who's come to uh, having a different kind of background but for somebody who's out of touch of reading hmm. it's actually impossible to without uh, summarizing the paragraph which is True. adequately uh, emphasized during the uh, course yeah so actually if you keep following the course that's the summary for verbal so hmm. for me uh, point once you move to point uh, i think for people who are who've done their engineering or who are like uh, somebody who's from the math, uh, maths who has done his uh, plus one and plus two uh, his higher secondary senior secondary in the maths for him it is will be easy but then mm. for quant also there are some important points especially if you're looking for q49 and beyond because yes look uh, easy questions you will always solve without even having a to without even having a subscription to a do easy uh, so I, i'll be bluntly honest if you want to score True. a yeah six, Maybe a low six hundred. You actually yeah. don't need any. But once you are looking beyond six fifty, six eighty, seven hundred beyond, I think that is where the uh, value of the EGMAT tool is actually exploited to the maximum. Once hmm. you are looking for those medium and hard questions, because you will not get exposed yeah. to those kind of questions to the OG uh, quant, which uh, actually didn't have even any book also for the EGMAT for the EGMAT. Okay. I actually followed the entire book. If you go uh, see my portal, I have explored it every day. Yes. I've done that yes. verbal also from the yeah. GMAT portal. So, so that is I where I feel that the eGMAT quant is important if you're looking mm. for that high score in quant, if you're especially Q49 and beyond. True. Because True. those kind of questions you will not find on the normal uh, GMAT books or maybe mm. the maybe in the advanced you can find some 50 or questions. Mm. But uh, the uh, I think. G G Mac Advanced there is yes. a book of for advanced questions. You'll find some kind of questions which are uh, similar to the real questions once you're doing the real exam. That mm. is the point. Uh, once yeah. you're doing the real exam, and if you're not being exposed to those kind of font problems, you will actually have a tough time. And I read somewhere I don't know on the G Mac Club. I think the founder of E G Mac, I think uh, Rajat, yes. mentioned something. Yes. I used to I sometimes do O G. I used to score like ninety five hundred percent accuracy on the O G. But uh, once it used to come to the <laughs> EG Maths scholar name, I used to drop my accuracy to seventy at times seventy five eighty. Yeah, so yeah. I feel like it's too tough. There, mm. I don't know why they are doing it. But then he wrote on somewhere on the EG Maths club that uh, if you want to fight a real war, you have to train harder than these. <laughs> true, <laughs> true, so true. So it's me. So I actually understood the point that if you yes. are actually doing the harder questions on the platform the scholar learning platform it helps you in the exam because yes. see for the final exam you can't just keep uh, looking at a question and solving it for the uh, like 5 minutes 10 minutes you have to actually be attuned to such kind of statement because uh, somewhere people write that gmat quant is easy they will not mm. ask you long stem questions but yeah. they do ask especially if you are doing a 
higher difficulty question they will ask you a question True. which will have uh, the difficulty of the eg maths for the learning level actually uh, i i think for somebody to score q50 and beyond mm. uh, the scholarium is the right uh, platform so if mm. you are scoring like 90 90% in scholarium you will surely do well on the uh, official the math, exam as official. well yeah yeah so i do understand uh, i think lot of there it is written that quant at eg mat is tough uh, mm. it is uh, it is more it is not required to study that kind of question but it is required yeah even if that one question that appears and it gives you a real headache in the exam yes. can actually get you into a spiral mode and you can miss uh, two three questions next to it because once you see something which you have not seen before it actually mm. disturbs you during the exam even though yes. you can get something in you will surely get a question or two in um, wrong on the final exam maybe people get 100% correct also but even Uh, to get something uh, wrong on GMAT as short, I think this was again brought to you by to me by you only that it is fine to get something wrong on the yeah it, it it is bound to happen, but to ha- see something which you have not seen ever on the it actually disturbs you so it mm. can actually uh, disturb your entire process during the exam so it is it is a good way to have exposure to such kind of problems prior to the exam yeah and I think uh, GMAT E GMAT quant is equally important uh, as the eg mat verbal at at times i even read that you don't need to do the eg mat quant you can just do the verbal but i think with the current dynamics of the because whatever i even the eg mat twice so yes yes maybe yes maybe i have seen around 62 questions on quant yeah. so those 62 questions you will find uh, similar to the questions you find on the eg yeah. so they do yeah. and i scored exactly 49 on my both six in all so yes 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 so you were... actually scored 36 and 37 on the six sigma. So hmm. whatever whatever you will score and you find on the portal is relevant. Hmm. That's the whole point of this story. That if you feel that you no, know, this will not be the final day exam. I will have something different to what I am yeah. doing right now or what I am scoring right now. It will not happen. Yeah. The final day will have the same kind of questions, the hmm. same kind of scores. Yes. Yes. So Rohit, I think it's very, you know, like you mentioned about Rajat also, it's likely, it's very rightly said that, you know, we want you to prepare for the most hard questions that can ever come across your way, right? It's yeah. not about yeah. just settling for the medium level questions that will actually help your score go up. The more yeah. hard and difficult questions you're able to solve, the higher would be the difficult. Right? Yeah. Now, the yeah. other question yeah. that I have for you is Rohit, now we have spoken about the difficulty level, right? Now, yeah. timing. Now, timing is something everyone is worried about, right? We talk about timing during the mocks. We talk about timing during the quizzes. So, how were you preparing yourself for the timing? And what were the adequate timings that you were looking into? Because in EGMAT language, we have a tucked time, right? The TAK. Yeah, yeah I know. Time. TAK, TAK. Exactly. Yeah. So, were you referring to that? How were you going about your timing strategy? Yeah. So, look... Uh... At times, I uh, if you do the mathematical calculation, it will be simple: two minutes per question in quant, and I think one point eight three seconds or something on the. Works for verbal, yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but it will not work. That it, it hmm. can't happen because ultimately you are not a machine; you are a human. You will take time for some questions. You might take some time during the initial part of the test. Yeah. So what is important? What is important is to have a cut off time, which hmm. I like. Seriously, I messed up in my first. Six sigma mock, wherein you told me that oh, this will not work. If you if you keep uh, like if you like get emotionally attached to some problem and keep solving it for five minutes, it will it will not work. Hmm. So I realized that. But then it is equally important to have some kind of cut off time. Yes. For every problem which you mentioned in an email to me, I, I just remember it. I think it is two minutes for uh. Yeah, it's two point five minutes for CR, two point seven five for quant problem, and yeah. I think it is one minute, uh, two minutes for a S, hard SC. Yes, problem. ninety seconds so, or two minutes for an nine, SC. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you will get that. You you need to have that kind of cut off, and yeah, uh, you can't just uh, keep spending time on one question for like mm. five minutes, six minutes. Because I did that in my couple of initial mocks, where I spent around five minutes. On one mm. point problem, I think, and I got it incorrect. So that that is where I realized that you need to have a cut off time, but you have to give equally. Uh, you have to give due weightage to a question. You can't just yes. say that I can solve every question in 
two minutes. It True. will happen that some questions will take more time mm. and some questions will take time, but you should have a cutoff time. That is the underlying yeah. point. Yeah. If yeah. you have a cutoff time, it will help you and uh, it can actually help you with the time management part for the final exam. Hmm. So that is where it helped me. And uh, though I was aware that for verbal, actually, I used to take a lot of time for the first two quarters. Like yeah. for first 18 block one block, yeah. I used to take, yeah, block one block, I used to take a lot of time. Hmm. But, uh, but then I do like that since, look, we need to know your strength at times. I, I was aware hmm. that I cannot uh, rush and solve verbal questions because hmm. I'm a slow reader. And I've been not into this kind of active. I'm not. I'm not an active reader. At, I don't read at all. I can watch a video. I can listen. Mm. I can talk and I can interact. But I generally avoid reading. Mm. So that is where I realized my uh, like this is actually I need to give time to my first two blocks. And I think you also helped me that you told that it is okay for some students to take some kind of extra cushion time during the first because your mind also takes. I used to do verbal yeah. as much. Yes, time. you have to get into the zone so, of an exam. Yeah. Zone. Yeah. 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 It does happen, and and it is it is and it, it is equally important to get the initial questions. I am not saying that you have to focus, you have to give 30 minutes for the first 10 questions, but it, you have to actually get the first few questions right so that mm. you get those hard difficulty questions, which yes. is a known fact for everyone. Just though, though people mention those tricks, which I seriously want to tell that you should avoid that you can score very good if you just do the first 10 questions mm. correctly, or yeah, you have to every part of the test is important. But yes. then you need to get those first few questions correct. And even if it takes you some time for that, you can take that. And then you can always look at your mocks. I used to keep uh, reviewing my mocks. So mm. that was again one thing wherein I used to see where, where, where am I taking time and I'm getting it correct. Equally important yeah. is if you're getting a question correct with some kind of an extra time, it is fine. Because mm. it, you told me that there will be some problems which require some more time. Yeah. I think for the RC part, I used to take the maximum time. I used to even in the start yes. for one paragraph yes yeah. yes so i think i think you can you can you can work mm -hmm. your way it will mm -hmm. it will fall in place once you keep giving those sigma like smokes it can yeah. help you in yeah. time management and the best part is the reviews so once you mm -hmm. give a six sigma i think every of each of my six sigma was reviewed by you so that yeah. helped me so mm -hmm. wherein you actually used to highlight this is the question which you've done correctly and taken some time it is fine mm -hmm. but there are questions which are you using brute force like you are getting involved in it. because i for quant especially what happens is that you feel that i have done this question previously same yeah. kind of question i've done this. yes but yes. why am uh, there is something which i'm missing mm. I, I cannot uh, because you can't believe that you can't get the answer and especially this happens during the problem solving part for me mm. problem solving mm. problems where, where, where you've got the answers and um, the answer which i have got there's none uh, it's not matching with the option so then mm. you start thinking why I can why why I'm getting this in not yes. Huh. So, so that is the point which was highlighted by you to me, I think, twice or thrice. Then I realized and even in the my final mail before the exam, I wrote it in bold capital, bold <laughs> underlined. Yes, that, that you're gonna let go of certain questions. <laughs> yeah, I remember. You have to, you have to. Because in quant I used to feel that no, I will call this because see, everybody comes from a background, everybody comes from a mindset. True. Yes, yeah. yes. yes. Though with time you can change yourself, but there is a, I think that's the word you use in one of them, behavioral correction, behavioral correction, yeah. You, you, you can actually, you have to change that at times. You have to actually yeah. uh, tell yourself that, look, even if you miss two, three questions, it will not matter. You, you've done your part, you've solved the problem, you're not getting an answer, fine. You yeah. Can, because if you keep calculating the game, you took two minutes for the first time, or you know, will took you one minute for the next time, exactly. then one minute for the yes. third time. Yes. It will keep uh, adding on. And yeah. finally, you will take adding on five, six minutes for one problem. Yeah. And ultimately, if you not get it correct, then what's the whole point of true. Uh, true, solving true. that problem? Yeah. So I, think I think it's time important. Management is, yeah, 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 please, yeah. please. So I think time management is one thing which is again taught uh, by EG Man in a very mm. subtle way. Mm. Without you knowing that they are trying to teach you something, if you give us a six sigma mock, you will have those kind of problems. Especially, I think this is uh, during the first half, mm -hmm. you will get a problem and you will be too focused and you will say, No, I'll solve. Because at the if you get a problem during the last block, then yeah. if you're taking to uh, if you're not able to get it, you will surely move on because you know that the, uh, there's hardly any time. 
yes but the initial yes part is still feel that okay i'll try and compensate it later but it doesn't happen that way so hmm. Hmm. that is where i think uh, if you give these six sigmas and you get them reviewed by the right people they will highlight in case we are having a time management issue yes yes i think yeah. rohit uh, because it's important for people to know that we are not asking them to just skip randomly it is about you yeah. giving a fair attempt right if you have yeah. a question you give a fair attempt but after a point you have to let go because you are losing out on time for other difficult questions that's the main perspective yeah. here yeah. right yeah. so rohit while you were moving from subsection to subsection right now this is a yeah. lot of information flowing your way if even yeah. in quants if from cr to rc if you may because for you it's an entirely new concept right yeah. now so yeah. at this yeah. point what kind of notes or were you maintaining error logs as such how were you going about because they play a very important role specifically in revision point of view right so yeah. what was your strategy and what were you maintaining so look i highlighted in the uh, i think beginning of the interview that for sc you need to have some notes written, yes especially yeah. the rules part for the each module and i would emphasize the same equally for quant hmm. so like there are i think five modules there is number of the algebra word problems and there is advanced geometry topic, and geometry. ad yes. Yeah. yes yes yeah yeah five so you have those i have i will have a, that one notebook which has about five sections so for i just used to use small notes like okay. the formulas so i and all of these things look once you are doing a section you don't need notes it's like i am doing quant hmm. uh, for the first time i will not use notes But like once you've done quant, then you are giving mocks, or yeah. maybe maybe you you've been told to go for a revised verbal, do some custom quizzes of verbal, and then you again uh, going back to quant. Then you mm. are then you either you keep looking for those videos uh, yes. on the portal, or you can have those small notes, or you mm. can even use the summaries at the end. I told you for SC there is some, and even for quant also there are at times uh, for every not for every, but there are few modules which. Like our formula base, there mm -hmm. are summaries. Like for geometry, I actually remember I used to use that one page summary for like what are the um, uh, properties of triangle, rectangle, quadrilateral. Yeah. So that helps you. So you have to manage the, the. If you don't have something for the final uh, two three days, then it will mm. be tough for you because then you keep looking for where to I actually go and revise. So I think yes, uh, that is where you can from the beginning part from the initial days only you can maintain. Uh, Small notebook or something. Not okay. You don't have to write everything. Okay. You know, yes. Yes. It. But for few things, you have to write and keep it. The or maybe you can use those PDFs. The second uh, thing I suggest to use those PDFs. But okay. Uh, the the part which I want to highlight, I think, if somebody questions me that maybe you actually faltered. Why have you? Why I'm not having a seven fifty or maybe beyond that? Because look, I <laughs> I really didn't maintain the error log for this one. So that is the. Uh, Whole problem which I faced during my last few days because you told me to go and revise my error logs, but I never had an error log. Hmm. Then once I was giving my mocks, I used to flag few questions. I, I think there is a feature on this problem that you yes. can flag few questions. Yes. So look, I had I maintained an error log from the starting, like whichever question yeah. I did incorrectly, I hmm. could have uh, just gone back to those. To, yeah. Uh, yeah. There is a way. There is a way as for the users to do it on Excel. Hmm. There is a there is an Excel error log sheet where you get every question and those where you. So since I did, I missed it during the starting part of my preparation because I was not interacting with anyone. I just started it on my own. But yes. then I realized that it is equally important to know where wherever you commit a mistake, you should have that mistake registered. Hmm. So I think that is the only part which I missed. And at times I used to, it used to haunt me that hmm. if I want to. Say which part is my weaker part? I have to. I don't know actually because I never ever yeah. had an error log. It is automated or has some kind of. If had it been Excel based, it would have been easy. If somebody says you okay, revise those problems. But then there is a feature on I think Scholar and MBA which can help you in case somebody. The has bookmark missed is it? Are you referring to the bookmark question? Yeah, there is a bookmark, and then the, if you want to do the custom quizzes, you have the option of selecting the incorrect questions. Yes. Like yes, all those yes. questions, and then you yeah. have to select the module also. Yeah, you can. You so can. Finally, yes. yeah, finally it helped me. So hmm. once I was, I was like, I mean, I don't have an error log. Now what should I do? Then I suddenly I was like exploring the tool and I saw that he told me to do uh, custom quizzes. I was not left with any questions. In yeah. Some, yeah. Yes. Like, yes. You have something. Then you can actually select like for SC all those questions which you have answered incorrectly. Incorrectly. And from yeah. a particular sub module, hmm. like for hmm. all those verb tenses which you have. Uh, 
done in uh, attempted incorrectly in your attempts previously. Yeah. So that helps me. So that helps me. But I, 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 should, I do recommend somebody to maintain an error log for this study. In yeah. case you've missed it, or I think at times you do get casual answers to things for like two, three months. Hmm. You miss something. So yeah. I, I, I think the other way is to simply bookmark the question. Or even if you've not done that, then there is a, I think we have done for people like me and we have missed it initially. That you can custom quizzes yeah, uh, wherein you can select all those questions which you have attempted incorrectly from a particular subject. Yes, yes. So, so a lot of things are there, and yeah. if somebody actually explores, there are so many things on this color name that you it's you can actually have all the bases covered. Yeah, and Rohit, one more question that I have for you is: What is the time commitment that you were putting in? right because that varies and that also plays a very crucial part the pace that you were able to complete the course and how many productive hours because it's not about just saying five six hours you are giving it's about the productive hours where you are actually able to see the results as well so what was your commitment on a daily basis look see uh, if somebody is in his college or maybe he's early in his job maybe yeah. he doesn't have those but i'm somebody who's into d like i'm around i would Adequate service now. Yes. I can't actually yes. take out so much of time from my work. True. I can't actually, and I have a wife, I have a newborn also at my home. So for me, uh, spending, you can say, quality time was hmm. very important. I, yeah. I didn't have an iota of time, uh, I didn't have any window for wasting time. For me, it was very clear. Yeah. Because if, and this now, see, I told you uh, during my main session, I need to get this. Why I need to get this? Yes. Why I don't have, I can't, every time I can't go back and study and take out time from my yes. work, from my family commitment. Yes. So, so actually, uh, so if you want to ask me the real time which I spent, I used to spend around two to three hours quality okay. time. But it was quality time. Even if it is 12 o'clock in the night, from 12 to 3 in the night, it yeah. used to be dedicated time for studies. Yes. Uh, and one need one has to do it that way. You can't just uh, uh, come for ten minutes study and then even though I think the EGMAT portal can still allow you that because at mm. times it used to happen with me also because I, there are days that you can't actually take out time since everything is uh, documented, everything is logged. So you yeah. can just click on the video; it will start resuming from the same place you have left it. Even if on this polynomial you've done some quizzes, there is data for everything. I think uh, mm. even if you want to see the quiz you attempted two months back, yes, you can, actually you can go, go back, back and record yeah. that. Yeah. Yes. So even even you guys allow that, but mm. I would recommend someone to have a continuity. Like for every day, somebody yes. can take out one or two hours a day. It is mm. more. And I used to also feel happy at times if you just log in, you see a chart for the last week wherein you have got bar graphs for the times. Yes. Yes. Time commitment so, that you have put in, yeah. So you can actually analyze there is at times here yeah, used to be days where I have not spent even one single hour because mm. there are commitments. Yes. And uh, yes. if some look at the age where I am giving GMAT or maybe somebody who's in a profession where there is there are constraints with people. Mm. I know that there are people who are who can take out time for just yeah. person, but yeah. uh, it's not with most of us because most of mm. us are working professionals. So for them. I think uh, you can try and spend two to three hours on a daily basis if okay. you are, want to give it in a window of two to three months. If you have yeah. more time, I think the subscription comes with six months. And yeah, maybe, yeah, it comes with six months. Yeah. So if you want to do the mathematics, you can give one hour, one hour if you're looking for a six months kind of mm. subscription mm -hmm. time. Mm. And finally, during the mocks, the strategy used to be simple one mock a day and the next day, revise that mock. Or yeah. next two days, you can take to revise and go through the mock. Yeah. Uh, so that if you summarize it, I think for somebody who's looking for three months time of preparation, one has to spend around two to three hours a day. Hmm. And hmm. somebody who's looking for around six months of preparation, I think both one hour is sufficient on a daily basis. Yeah. And yeah. you with the with the automatic tool, you do have those documented things that you want to get yes. for something you missed two three days. So you are always on the you can refresh yourself and start. Yeah. Yeah, true. And I think it really makes sense, Rohit, because see, we all are humans, like you said, there will be commitments yeah. that might take over your GMAT preparation right now, yeah, right? Yeah, sometimes yeah, maybe yeah. function, sometimes work pressure, and it's okay to take that one day break, but it's also important yeah. that you maintain that consistency after the break, right? Yeah, you get yeah, back yeah. and you maintain that continuity. So one last question that I have for you, Rohit, is like, since now you have achieved your target, right? Yeah, so what is that yeah. one learning that you 
feel that has really worked for you and you would like to share it with other aspirants who are targeting a 700 or more right now? Uh, look, I want to, uh, like, if you want to just summarize it, money, if you have to trust, you have to, uh, put, you have to uh, trust someone. If you are, mm. if you are really following, or if you've taken a subscription, then just follow it. Mm. I know that the people who can prepare it on themselves, if they, if, if they can, it's well and good, it's fair enough. Mm. But yeah. if you have taken a subscription, just trust this is. If, if you guys have mentioned that the threshold for medium and hard is 55, 70, there's no point actually uh, questioning this stuff. Why, even if I get a, a 60, why can't I graduate? Because I think it, mm. it, it is tested and tried. I think it is tried and tested. Because yeah. it, it happened with me. If I moved on to something which I am not scoring, it, I had to actually go back and do it. Mm. Uh, so rather than going back and again doing it, 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 it is better to yeah. follow whatever is documented, whatever is written by, on the portal. If it has been told to you, that you need to achieve some kind of threshold, mm. then you follow it. So, it, that one piece of advice, if you've taken a subscription, if you've given, if you're, if you're putting trust on someone, then just put it, then, then just follow it to the T. Just then don't try and uh, outsmart the system, I would say, because mm. ultimately you guys are, you guys have, are working day in day out today. Yeah. Uh, I am here, I have done just two, three months of probation. Now I will not be looking back at GMAT because I have other things now. I, 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 have, I have my application course and other things. I am yes. not focusing on GMAT. But hmm. you guys are doing it if you are working with someone else who has got, so you guys have got experience, you guys have got data. So try and just follow it. That's my only advice. If you follow it, you will get results. The moment you digress, then it might work for you if you are like super prepared or if you are like if you mm. have your own way, it's, mm. it's just good. But if you are putting trust on someone or if you are like looking for some kind of help, then just follow the advice. That's my mm. only. Yeah. So thanks, Rohit. Thank you for joining in. And actually, thank you for putting your trust in us because I know yeah. you went with our platform very thoroughly. You did all the course, the verbal and the cones. And I'm happy that it has paid up beautifully for you. You were able to achieve your target. So thank, thank you. you for this beautiful interaction, Rohit. And thank you for joining in today. Thank you. Thank you so much.